the Mongols commemorated their triumph by dining on the bodies of their vanquished enemies, who were left to suffocate beneath their weight, while Canada experienced fear from a radical Russian Christian nudist group, reminiscent of a fusion between hippies, Quakers, and Al-Qaeda. After defeating their pursuers in a brutal battle, the Mongols chose to commemorate their triumph by feasting upon their captured enemy commanders. The Mongols displayed their brutality by feasting on the bodies of their captive enemies, using them as a makeshift table while reveling in their victory, ultimately causing the slow and painful death of their defeated foes. The tradition of dining atop defeated enemies was not exclusive to the Mongols, as the first Abbasid Caliph, al-Safa, also partook in this ghoulish celebration after his victory over the Umayyad dynasty. Leo Tolstoy became a patron of the pacifist Daukobors, a Russian Christian sect known for their nudity, wife-swapping, and rejection of material possessions, but even his support couldn't protect them from persecution. They eventually immigrated to Canada, where they gained a reputation for mass nudist protests and large-scale arsons. In their struggle to adapt to Canada, the Ducobors, who were initially seen as ideal settlers, were stripped of their lands due to their refusal to swear allegiance to the crown, causing them to migrate to British Columbia, where they established dull communal villages on government land. Their leader, Peter Verigen, maintained control over his nudist followers through floggings with brambles until he was eventually killed by a dynamite explosion in 1924, leading to the sect's fragmentation and a rapid descent into chaos. In a remote corner of Canada, a radical splinter group of the Duke Hobors, a sect of the Russian Orthodox Church, emerged after their leader's assassination in 1924. Rejecting the advancements of the modern world, they went to extreme lengths to enforce their beliefs, resorting to acts of violence and destruction against fellow Dukabors who embraced modernity, all while embracing a nudist lifestyle reminiscent of Adam and Eve. Canadian authorities faced a challenging task in dealing with radical Russian religious migrants who shocked sensibilities with their mass nude parades, leading to the sprinkling of itching powder on protesters and the eventual criminalization of public nudity. The Freedomites, as they called themselves, not only engaged in passive resistance but also actively persecuted other Ducobors, raiding their villages, burning their homes, and dynamiting their factories as punishment for straying from the simple life. The Freedomites, a sect of Daukobors, waged a relentless guerrilla war against the modern world and their fellow Daukobors, resorting to bombings and arsons for nearly four decades in British Columbia. The authorities responded with harsh punishments, but the violence escalated to a staggering 259 bombings in just one region in 1962. It wasn't until the arrest of 60 sect leaders that the violence finally subsided, leading to the assimilation of the remaining Daukobors into Canadian society. During a visit to a Soviet port in 1941, the captain of the British submarine HMS Trident received an unexpected gift from a friendly Soviet admiral, a reindeer calf named Pollyanna, which was brought aboard the submarine through a torpedo tube and became part of the Royal Navy. During its final weeks at sea, HMS Trident played host to an unexpected passenger, Pollyanna the reindeer, who enjoyed a diet of moss, condensed milk, and galley scraps, and even insisted on sleeping under the captain's bed. During the French Revolution, clothing became a clear symbol of social hierarchy, 
with the aristocracy flaunting extravagant attire, the clergy donning elaborate robes, and the commoners opting for plain suits. During the French Revolution, extravagant fashion became a dangerous political statement, as dressing in the elaborate styles of the aristocracy could lead to suspicion and a date with the guillotine. During the French Revolution, the despised aristocratic fashion was seen as a sign of counter-revolutionary intentions, leading to the suppression of expensive clothing and the rise of workaday outfits as symbols of revolutionary egalitarianism, a fashion revolution that lasted even after the monarchy's restoration. On the night of August 21, 22, 1791, African slaves in Haiti revolted against their masters, seeking revenge for years of unimaginable cruelty and torture. They unleashed their fury, using any weapons they could find, and enacted brutal acts of violence, including hanging, drowning, crucifixion, burial alive, and forcing them to eat excrement. They also flayed them with lashes, leaving them to be devoured by worms, ants, or mosquitoes, and even threw them into boiling cauldrons of cane syrup. The slaves were subjected to unimaginable horrors, such as being rolled down mountainsides in spiked barrels and being torn apart by man-eating dogs, until finally being finished off with bayonets and daggers. As the Haitian slaves revolted against their masters, they unleashed a brutal wave of revenge, pillaging, raping, torturing, and killing their former owners, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. The violence was swift and merciless, with overseers, masters, and mistresses being dragged from their beds, some fortunate enough to be swiftly butchered, while others endured torturous deaths using the very same methods that had been inflicted upon the slaves. To further instill fear, the severed heads of European children were often impaled on spikes, leading the way for the advancing slave forces. In 1791, Haiti's sugar country, once the world's most profitable real estate patch, was transformed into a chaotic and violent wasteland as the slaves revolted, killing thousands of whites and destroying countless plantations, all in their pursuit of freedom from slavery. Initially, the rebels saw themselves as fighting for the French king, believing that he had issued a decree to free them, which the island's governor and white settlers had unjustly suppressed. News of the slave uprising in Haiti quickly spread, leading to a massive increase in the number of rebellious slaves who took up arms against their masters, resulting in the liberation of over 100,000 slaves within just 10 days. Robin Hood, the legendary outlaw, gained popularity among the upper classes in Elizabethan England after being transformed into an aristocrat named Earl Robert of Huntington, who was wrongfully disinherited by his uncle and became an outlaw in Sherwood Forest. There were many outlaws in medieval England with names similar to Robin Hood, but they were not driven by noble motives and instead resorted to crime for mundane reasons. Identifying the original Robin Hood legend is challenging due to the commonality of the name Robin and the surname Hood during medieval England, making it difficult for historians to pinpoint which specific criminals might have inspired the legend. The earliest potential Robin Hood was Robert Hod of York, who became an outlaw after his goods were seized to pay off a debt while other contenders include the Dayville brothers who fought in the Second Barons' War, but the most likely candidate is Roger Godbird, an outlaw who operated from Sherwood Forest and had a hundred men under his command, famously escaping from Nottingham Castle. In the early 20th century, 
Lake Malawi served as the unlikely setting for the first naval engagement of World War I, with British commander Edmund Rhodes and German captain Berndt finding themselves on opposite sides despite their friendship. Captain Rhodes of the British Royal Navy disabled the German gunboat SS Hermann von Wismann with a single volley, leading to Captain Berndt's furious rowing to the HMS Gwendolyn, where he cursed out Rhodes and questioned his sobriety and sanity before being explained the situation over whiskey and taken away as a prisoner of war. Andrew Jackson, America's toughest president, was known for his ruthless nature and success on the battlefield as he sought revenge against the British, inflicting heavy casualties during the Battle of New Orleans. Andrew Jackson, known for his quick temper and a penchant for violence, engaged in numerous duels throughout his life, with estimates ranging from 13 to over 100. In 1806, Andrew Jackson engaged in a duel with Charles Dickinson, known as the best pistol shot in the country, where Dickinson shot Jackson in the chest. But Jackson ultimately emerged victorious by delivering a fatal shot to his opponent after a misfire. On January 30, 1835, Richard Lawrence, a house painter who had a habit of angrily muttering about Andrew Jackson, suddenly declared, I'll be damned if I don't do it, before attempting to assassinate the president. Enraged by the failed assassination attempt, the 67-year-old President Jackson took matters into his own hands, mercilessly beating the would-be assassin with his cane until bystanders intervened to save Lawrence from a potentially deadly fate. Parents in 19th century England would sometimes gift their children with full teeth removal as a way to spare them from the excruciating pain of having their teeth yanked out by a barber surgeon without anesthetic, and this gift was even given to brides as a wedding present. Despite his reputation as a bloody general, Ulysses S. Grant had a fear of blood that made him physically ill and caused him to avoid any sight or hint of it, even in his meals. In a historic act of defiance, French domestic servants and waiters, who were denied the right to wear mustaches as a symbol of their lower social status, went on strike in 1907, demanding fair wages, shorter working hours, and the freedom to embrace their facial hair like their fellow countrymen. This strike not only captivated the nation, but also forced a long overdue reckoning with the classist injustice that had been imposed upon them. And after a determined two-week stand, the mustacheless workers emerged victorious, securing the right to proudly sport their mustaches. Having served in Dubi Trau, Korea and Vietnam without a single injury, Ludwig Holga attributes his survival to the power of prayer, which he believes saved his life. From fighting in Europe with the 36th Infantry Division to playing percussion in the 45th Infantry Division's band, Hoge witnessed the dangers of war but emerged physically unharmed, earning a bronze star along the way. While entertaining American troops in Korea, Ludwig Hoga and his band faced tough criticism from the Chinese enemy, who would respond with artillery rounds whenever they played music they disliked. King Charles VII of France was infatuated with his mistress Agnes Sorrel, who gained attention not only for her beauty but also for her daring fashion choice of exposing one breast, a trend that was both admired and criticized by her contemporaries. Throughout his childhood, George Washington was ten times more afraid of his mother, Mary Ball Washington, due to her constant passive aggressiveness, making things awkward for him throughout his life. 
Mary Ball Washington, the mother of George Washington, made things uncomfortable for her son during the Revolutionary War by requesting money from Virginia's House of Delegates, prompting George to write a letter urging them not to give her any money. Additionally, Mary remained a vocal supporter of King George III, even as her son led the Patriots in their fight for independence. And when George became president and visited her, she did not celebrate but instead informed him that she was dying. In 1944, Imperial Japanese Navy seaman Noboru Kinoshita survived a shipwreck off the Philippines and joined Japanese forces on Samar Island, only to be transformed into an infantryman in Luzon in 1945, where he fought against U.S. ground forces during the Battle of Luzon. When his unit was scattered, Kinoshita ventured into the jungles of Luzon, where he managed to evade American forces and Filipino partisans for a remarkable 10 years. Isolated in the jungles of Luzon, Noboru Kinoshita survived on lizards, frogs, fruits, and monkeys, unaware that the war had ended, waiting for the victorious Japanese forces to rescue him until he was apprehended by Philippine police and ultimately took his own life. In Greek mythology, King Midas was believed to have the power to turn everything he touched into gold, but there actually was an 8th century BC King Midas of Phrygia, who married a princess credited with inventing Greek coinage, leading to an economic boom in Phrygia and possibly inspiring the legend of his golden touch. In 1957, a massive tomb complex was discovered near ancient Gordium in Turkey, containing the remains of a five-foot-three man in his 60s, along with ornate tables and bronze vessels filled with traces of alcohol, suggesting a final feast for the departed.